Camilla. God MC. Da da ti da. I'm diggity. I'm an expensive guy. You want? Yeah. So my name is Manifest. I'm not a rapper. I'm an ideas company. Uh, I mean, 20 years ago, the idea of being a rapper was professionally was a far-fetched one for me. I mean, every year since I can remember, adults will ask me that one dreaded question that plagues my existence. What do you want? <laughs> I mean, I used to hate that question. Uh, it sounds simple, but it was, for me, it was a loaded question. I told them everything they wanted to hear. Engineer. Oh, yeah, everything they wanted to hear, I told them. I said engineer. I said doctor. I said lawyer. That was an obvious one that made them happy. <laughs> uh, pilot. And my favorite one, I said when I was four, I said watchman. Because I was, inf yeah, I was, because I was infatuated with a, this beautiful boy and owl that there was a watchman in my auntie's place in Legon Hat. And it was amazing. It was so colorful. And I wanted to be a watchman for how far I've come. Eh? <laughs> Um, I mean, I even wanted to be Michael Jordan at some point, but I want to, just like the rapping ambitions, I didn't share with anybody because it seemed far-fetched. Um, fast forward going to university and the idea of being a musician or rapper professionally was still a far-fetched idea. Um, as much as I loved music and I kept spending a lot of time, I mean, it still was a far-fetched idea. Uh, I was exploring my gifts, putting words and ideas together, but I mean, I did even not whisper it to myself, like, yo, one day you're going to become a rapper. It was, it was terrifying. I still was, at that point, I couldn't make that leap. It was terrifying. Um, but two things happened. I changed and the world changed. So in between these two things happening, you know, it was a perfect storm for me. Uh, but let me first address the world changing. Um, technology and innovation drastically changed the means of producing music. Back in those days, if you watch whether it's Bob Marley or those, there used to be these huge studios, mixing boards from here to here, all this sort of, I mean, so to be an artist then, you had to make a demo, you had to go to somebody and say, I have talent, you have resources, so give me permission to create, almost. But technology and innovation changed all of that. With a laptop or even an iPad and a secondhand uh, studio mic, you can be in a bedroom or I can even create a whole album here. Yeah. It sounds amazing, but there's, you know, to every amazing possibility there's a pitfall, a clear oversaturation. Like becoming a musician now is like the lottery. I mean, I think lightning could be a successful musician. I think lightning might strike you before you become a success because everybody can do it and everybody might try it. The most ta some of the most talented people, unfortunately, are going to go unnoticed for all time unless they grab uh, the bull by his horn and figure something out. Which is why I think the, the topic of today about disrupting the status quo is very important. A second layer of the creativity is figuring out how to cut through the noise. And that's where the disruption comes in. So be me being very aware of that, everything I did after, I guess, joining the music industry formally was having an awareness of the fact that I needed to be disruptive. It wasn't something I desired, but it's something that was required. I thought very early on how I wanted to be seen or how I wanted to see myself, not even at that moment. I, I, I realized I wanted to be an artist over an entertainer. I realized a privileged substance over style. I realized I preferred death over flimsy. I realized quality over quantity. I realized African over Eurocentric. These things I realized early too. I was going to be a movable. I was going to be quite unflinching in how I 